Hello and welcome to another exciting Blender tutorial. I'm Chris Bailey with C. Bailey Film and this is the continuation of our epic space battles making a sci-fi movie in Blender series. Let's get started. Don't forget to subscribe. Subscribing to the channel really helps it grow in a big way and uh, leave a comment as well. It really, uh, really does a lot for me. And check out the Patreon. We've got some really cool stuff over there. We've got project files. We've got all the uncut live, live streams. There's some free stuff too. So you don't even have to be a member of the Patreon to take advantage of it. You can get some of those free things that are there. Okay, so today what we're gonna do is continue on uh, our series with the next uh, couple of shots. So probably just one more shot, we'll see. Um, now. What we what we've left up to. I'm opening. I've got Premiere open here with uh, with the edit um, that I've had, and let's just kind of review where we're up to, and we can talk about what's next. Okay, so the last little section we did was right here. So our little scanner bot discovers the runes, and then explosions start happening. So what I wanted to do was make this next section, I wanna introduce the, the spider bot um, kind of in all its glory. So we've got that little moment where we introduce him um, a little bit, you know, with the shot where he's watching, so we get a sense of them. But I wanna have a, I wanna show a couple of things. I wanna communicate a couple of things to our audience. I wanna communicate that there's multiple spider bots lurking out there and uh, that they're all working together and that they're hunting down these little, uh, our little droid friends. So I wanna have a shot that brings in three spider bots all at once and kind of gives them a really big dramatic reveal where we see them in all their glory, all right? So what we're gonna do is jump over to Blender and get started putting that together. Now, first thing I wanna do is just think about how long I want the shot to be. So I'm just gonna come right here and uh, I'm just gonna make an endpoint here in Premiere. And I think I'm gonna go right about to here is kind of where I've marked it out. And that is five, roughly five seconds, five and a half seconds, maybe, maybe six seconds long. So I think that'll be our plan is we'll run with about six seconds of animation. So over here in Blender, um, I've just got our scene that we left off with. Um, this is just um, kind of a cleaned up empty scene, so there's no animation data. It's got the factory. It's got our asteroids that we made in the first episode, uh, along with the background planes. Um, and then the, uh, the little spline uh, camera controller that we made in uh, the first episode as well. Now we're gonna be using that in this episode to uh, begin to map out some animation. So we finally get to start using this thing that we set up way back at the beginning, so hey. Good news. All right, now what I wanna do is think about the principles of how to have a really nice action shot. So when you have um, characters like chasing each other, especially in space, you're ending up with, um, you can end up with camera moves that are kind of all over the place. Um, shots that kind of you know swing off and things come into frame and it can get a bit chaotic and hard to manage, especially when you're animating. And what you wanna do is you wanna figure out how do I, how can I simplify things and keep things in control um, so that I can get a lot of dynamic motion but still be in control of my animation. So I, I know what's happening and I'm able to, to make it happen the way I want it to happen. Cause you gotta give yourself creative control. You gotta be able to sh shape and mold things. If it's too chaotic and too crazy and your camera's flying too fast and you got things intersecting the frame and then you're trying to animate your thing and you can't keep them in frame and it can just get really messy. So that's why using a curve like this is really, really helpful for just mapping out a nice, smooth, concurrent path for an object. Now, what's really important is that we don't have too much action. So this is just a curve. Um, I haven't really thought much about it yet, um, but here's a good example. I've got this little bank in the curve uh, right here in the middle. And you know, that might look cool. And you're thinking, yeah, this would be a nice camera move. We're gonna swing around and stuff. But this bank is actually gonna introduce just a really wild moment where the camera pans way off. And it's gonna be really tough to keep anything in frame for that. And it's gonna actually cause us to lose more control. I mean, that's not what we want. So I'm actually better off if I go into edit mode and uh, taking this, maybe just deleting that vertex right there and keeping this nice straight path with like a real gradual arc to it. And that kind of motion is going to actually get, put you in a much better position to get a really dynamic camera move. Um, so when you think about action sequences, especially in space where you can fly anywhere, Think about starting with a very simple uh, motion path and build out from that. So let's do that. All right, so first step, I'm gonna go ahead and line up my camera and my spider bot. So we've got, I've already imported everything, uh, appended them into the scene. 
Um, and I've got my Spiderbot control. If I just hit full stop on my keyboard and my number pad to jump to it, you can see he's right here. He's at the center of my scene and he's got, all of his rotation is zeroed out. Now that's really important for um, making sure that this uh, constraint trick works, okay? So we wanna make sure that we keep our spider bot following the constraint, and we wanna make sure he doesn't get off and stuff, and in order to get everything lined up perfectly, you gotta make sure they're all zeroed out. It's the same for the camera, all right? So let's add that in. I'm gonna to go to the constraint tab, and I'm gonna add a constraint, and I'm gonna use the follow path constraint. Now this is what we talked about in the first episode. We're just kind of reviewing it. So our target path is gonna be this uh, spider path. So that's what I've named that path that you just saw. So I'll just click on that. Now you can see it disappears. If I hold down the, if I hit the full stop key and zoom out, you can see what happens. He's, he's jumped all the way to the end of this spline right out here. So he's right on that position. Okay, now you're gonna get weird positional values and stuff if you've, if you've moved your character before doing this. So just make sure you zero everything out first. That's really, really important. All right, so now we gotta position our camera. So let's, um, let's go, I've got my camera here. I've got a couple cameras in the scene just left over from other shots, but I'm just gonna work with one here. So I'm gonna take my camera. Now again, this camera is zeroed out, zero, zero, zero for the location and the rotation. I'm gonna put the same constraint, uh, the follow path constraint. Now I'm gonna put this camera on the same path as my spider bot. So I'll go to the spider path and I'll hit the full stop key. Well, I didn't put any two there. Actually, I'll just go ahead and jump into the camera with this view. That's why I've got two views, one for my camera, one for my scene. All right, now, what we wanna do first is we wanna position them in the right spot. Now, every path has a direction, a flow to it. And you can see that from these arrows. So this path starts here and ends up there. Now, I can select all of this path and I can go up here to curve and I can, um, um, where is it, Se switch direction. So it's under segments. If I go switch direction, it's actually gonna invert the direction of this. You can see now these arrows are pointed the other way. And conveniently, my uh, characters are now up here at the beginning of the spline up here where I want them. But um, you could also get around that by just taking the constraint and just changing the offset um, value. So now um, offset is a number value that animates along the curve based on kind of the, the length of the curve, I think is how it's calculated. Um, I like to use fixed position, and that just goes from zero to one. So when you're at one, you're at one end. When you're at zero, you're at the other. So that's just a bit easier. I'm also gonna go um, follow curve. Actually, I'll just do follow curve with the spider bot. Now, the next step is to get everybody oriented correctly. So let's first, let's do the spider bot. So I'll go to my spider bot control, and um, I'll set, uh, let's see, fixed position again. And I'm gonna tick on follow curve. And that means that he's gonna rotate with the curve, which is important. Otherwise, he would just kind of stay oriented in the same way, moving along the curve, which is not, not what we want. All right, now, what I can do here is I can have a look at him. Now, because I've zeroed out his rotation, okay, it's really important. If zeroed out his rotation, that means I can accurately tell what's going on. If he had a different rotation and stuff, it'd be really hard to figure out how to set this thing up right. So just again, make sure that you're all zeroed out. I'm gonna go to the constraint tab. Now I can see here that I want him pointing this way. I don't want him pointing off this way. So right now he's pointing on the X direction and he's oriented, his up direction is on the Z. So you can see here, up axis is Z. So that's correct, I want that, but I want him pointing along the Y. So uh, actually, oh, there we go. So he's pointing along the Y. What I want him to do is point along the X. That's the one that I wanna be facing forward. So if I click on X, you can see he turns and now he's facing dead along that path. Now, another thing that I've done um, with this spider bot is I've taken the, the look control that we've built in for him. So this is the controller that we're using to determine where he aims. And um, I've actually just, in this instance, I've parented it to the spider bot controller. So this thing here, so that as this spider bot animates along the curve, this uh, look control will just stay with him. And that again is just to simplify things. So they're just gonna stay together. And that means I can animate that look control separately to put in a bit more dynamic motion. Now I'm gonna grab my camera and I'm gonna set up the orientation as well. Now this one I want a little bit different. I'm gonna take my camera, I'm gonna hold down shift and drag. If you hold down shift and drag for any value in Blender, the value moves slower than it normally would. So you wanna use smaller increments. If I was just to normally drag this, he would like kind of just move too quick to get control. So. Anyway, so I'm just gonna move him up a little bit on the spline so he's in front of the spider bot so that I can think about how I want uh, the camera oriented. Okay, now, 
I could say follow curve. Um, and we will start with that. Um, so you can look at this and I go, okay, I want it to be, right now it's saying the Z is up, uh, but I want Y to be up. So I'm gonna switch that to Y. Now you can see it disappeared, right? The reason why that is it's because the forward axis and the up axis are the same. So whenever those match, he's actually gonna go off in a weird direction. So just bear that in mind. All you gotta do is change one of these, make sure they're not the same. All right, so now what direction we want him pointing? When I'm looking this way, so um, we want him looking not on the, the X, we want him looking on the Z, right? So if I go to the Z, now he's gonna be looking the right way. Now, if he was pointing off the wrong way, you could go to negative Z, that's gonna point him in the different direction, so that's how that works. But I'm gonna go Z. So now my camera is aiming at the spider bot, and they're both following the same path. So now, as I animate this camera along the path, I can also animate the spider. Both are gonna work out really well. But one thing that we gotta think, think about here is I'll move my camera further down the path here so you can see. So he's now he's, he's over, I'll put him over here for now. I've got my spider bot. I'm gonna move him along the path too. So he's now following and you'll see, he'll come into view of the camera and he's getting closer to camera, closer to camera. And you can see that he's right in the center of frame which doesn't always give the best result. Um, it's better to kind of be off at an angle when it comes to your characters and stuff. So we can go here to the controls and we can actually change the position a little bit of our camera and it will allow that position to influence where, it's, where it is a little bit. And we can like kind of offset it off to the side. But then even more what we can do to create really nice motion is we can take that camera, we can add another constraint. Instead of following the curve, what we can do is we can add a uh, damped track constraint. And a damped track constraint, basically it, it causes your object to rotate towards another object. So if I make this the spider bot as my target, spider bot control, now my camera is gonna try and orient itself towards the spider bot control. Now again, you gotta get your, um, your cardinal directions correct. So I want it, I think on the Z, on the negative Z, yeah, there it is. So the negative Z. So now the camera's always gonna point at the spider bot. So if I take my spider bot and I hold down shift and I move him along the curve, you can see that the camera is tracking with him. Not only that, but he's actually getting these really cool rotations and pivots. Now, if I take my camera and bring it back more onto that axis, uh, more into the, uh, the axis of the, uh, the motion on the, um, the curve, my positional value, and I bring that just back off. So just a little bit off the, um, curve there, I can go back to this constraint and just hold down shift. You can see now he's gonna fly like right by the camera. We'll get this nice whip pan effect. So that could be a really, really useful way of creating some dynamic motion while keeping control. So now let's create a shot. Um, I've got one of my hero asteroids here set up and the idea behind this shot is I want, the, I want this spider bot to kind of appear from behind it. So let's go ahead and position the spider bot. I'll move him kind of up here. And now let's get our camera. And let's, let's find a position for our camera that I'll put him right back on the, on the curve itself. And let's take our curve and let's try and reorient it a little bit so that, um, so that we've got more of a, a curve around on this, uh, around this asteroid. So I'm just gonna grab this curve on the Y and kind of tighten it up a little bit. I might grab this and play around with what it does, how it moves us. I might grab my camera, go out of edit mode, go back to my constraints and come up here. And maybe take this asteroid and move it just here so it's in front. I'm gonna make sure it's not gonna intersect. I don't want the spider bot to actually intersect with this. Um, and I might bring this closer to camera possibly. Now let's make sure the spider bot doesn't actually go through. Yeah, cool, he comes around it. So you can see how that, that really works. Like we've got this cool moment where we can start the shot maybe around here 
And the camera's got all kinds of nice twists and turns as it follows this guy. And then if I, if I offset him just a little bit more, like this, and then go back to my spider bot and see how that looks. See, I get this nice reveal as he comes, comes out from behind something and then flies off. All right, so let's start animating the shot. We know that this one, we want this to take uh, about um, five to six seconds. So I'll just drag up my timeline and I'll switch to the timeline editor here. So we're doing it uh, 24 frames a second. There it is. So right here, 24 frames a second. Uh, that's that's our frames per second. So if we want to get this to work, we can go uh, 24 for 24 frames a second times however many seconds we want. So if we want to go six seconds, let's do that. So that's 144 frames. So that's how we know we're going to have the right amount. Now we're going to start this shot with the spider bot. Um, let's see, I'll move him, might move him back a little bit more. So I'll just set a keyframe here. And I will take my camera and I'm going to find a good spot for the camera to start. So I think maybe right about here could be nice. So I have another, set another keyframe there. Now I could also set keyframes here and I might do that just for safety. So uh, both for my rotation and my location. And I'll do that as well for the spider bot. Uh, just in case I decide to do anything with those. Uh, and the target as well, I'll just set uh, lota location rotation keyframes for them. I'll come to, I'll go ahead and just go to the end actually. And what I'll do here at the end is I'll first I'll get my camera, get my constraint, and oh, we've got a, uh, I can just delete that marker there because that camera marker was from a previous shot and that was locking us into that camera. So I'm going to move not too far. So this, this path's really long. You don't want to go too far because because this ship's not going to actually fly that fast, right? So we got to kind of get a good speed difference. So I'll try this. Um, and another thing too that I really want to do is I want to make sure I don't have any speed up or slow down in this shot. I just want it to start moving fast and I want it to end moving at the same speed. So I'm just going to right click on all these keyframes with all of them selected and go interpolation linear. Now I'll get my spider bot and I'll move him forward as well. And I want to think about how this, I want this shot to look. We might want to zoom around behind them because it's quite dynamic and can be really fun. But it's not quite the shot I had in mind. So let me just stick with this for now. And set another keyframe. There, now my camera's not quite in the right spot for this, so I'm gonna go back to my camera, go to my, my controls here, and I want to hold down shift, and I'm just gonna kinda come around a little bit more so it's more of like a dramatic shot that really features our main main robot, main uh, spider bot here. All right, um, now another thing I could do is I could set my default. Um, there we go, now let's take that spider bot control and make sure all these guys are linear as well. That's how we were getting that bob at the end. Now in the previous shot, we had the explosion happen in the bottom right corner. And so the lasers were coming off from this angle. So that's why I've got the, the spider bot kind of entering from that same side of frame, because um, that really helps sell that, uh, that motion, that it's like that orientation of the scene. All right, now it feels really slow, right? And it doesn't feel necessarily very exciting. But that's all right. We're getting, we're just getting started. I'm going to grab my camera and I'm going to play with uh, grabbing all my camera keyframes and dragging them out a bit so that we start further away and see what that looks like. Now, one thing that's really cool that you can do with a shot is actually cross the plane of action. So if I cross the plane of action like this and then I'll need to do some rotation to make up for the make up for that, so like this right here. Set a keyframe, set a keyframe, hit A to select all, interpolate linear. We'll see how that works. Yeah, now you can see it's really cool because we're crossing 
the plane of motion. Doing that always creates a more dynamic shot. It's always more interesting. Make this a bit bigger. So now let's figure out how we're gonna introduce the other uh, spider bots, and then how are we gonna create a bit more dynamic uh, motion to this. Um, another thing to look at is our frames per second. So we're going about half the speed that we would normally go. So if I go over to simplify in my main, go to the camera icon, and you click simplify, and um, just go here, max subdivision zero, uh, make sure that the viewport max subdivisions are zero. And yep, yeah. what that does is it simplifies everything that's got a subdivision surface on it, which means there's a lot less geometry in your scene. And that can help your scene run a lot faster. So you can see we're closer to 24 frames a second. Um, still not quite there though, it's still going a bit slow. Um, we could also help it by just having one view. Only one viewport can help speed things up. You can see now we're hitting that 24 at the beginning. So let's grab our camera. We'll go to the final keyframe and we'll go to our constraint and we will drag this thing way out and just go heaps further, maybe all the way to here, let's say. Let's try that. And now let's grab our spider and same deal, drag this way out and get our nice shot. So we've got this nice kind of close up and hit another keyframe. And then uh, select all, right click, interpolate linear, go back to our camera and do the same thing. Now we're moving a lot further, okay? And we probably even want our camera now to start a bit closer. So I'll grab all these and bring them right back in. So now we're going a bit too fast. So we've probably gone, we've gone too far. So let's, let's back, it, back it off a bit. So put that one back. We'll come back to our final keyframe. Instead of 8.4, let's go, let's put the difference. Let's go to like 0.5, maybe something like that. And then let's grab our spider bot and bring him back as well to 0.5. Now let's see how fast that feels. Go to our camera. Now let's try introducing a bit more, um, a few more interesting uh, Asteroids. Also too, I think I might take my camera. I wanna see what it looks like if I animate my position off a little bit, um, a little bit more like this, for example. Just hit I for that and then grab that and then drag it over these just to replace them. Right click and just do it linear. Does that do anything for us? Not really. Bit of a weird motion there at the start. I feel like this asteroid could be a lot bigger so that we really have it in frame more. Yeah, that looks much nicer. Cool, all right. Now let's get a few more asteroids in and let's get our other guys going. So we'll have him come in. I wanna have another one kind of come into frame. And then we also need to start animating this uh, look control. So maybe let's start with that. That'd be fun, I think. So let's take that look control and um, what I'm gonna do with it is, I think I'm gonna try, I'll turn on Auto King and I'll hit play and I'll grab it and I'm just swinging it around. Like that. Also gonna go into uh, the extra controls that we've built into this guy, and I'm going to make sure we can have the fold come on, that'd be cool. Lights are on, I'm gonna turn the lasers off. Yeah, I don't know if he'd be looking around quite that much. Let's try that again. Let's just go over here, we'll just box select all these keyframes and hit delete. All right, let's try that again. So I'm just gonna kinda make it subtle. We could also take the fold and really you know, bring that on at some point. So like we could come back here, maybe hit keyframe, come forward and bring that up. Now what we can do is take him, come up here and start adding more 
interest into him. So if we come to this point right here, um, let's take him and let's rotate him on the X like this. Set a keyframe and then rotate on the X back this way. Like that. Make sure it is set to Bezier. And let's see, I'll go to my camera. I think of what I might do with my camera is go to the constraint and actually try and get closer to him sooner. So and turn that into Bezier. Don't know if that's gonna do it for us. No, that's not gonna work. I mean, that's a cool shot. <laughs> it's a crazy shot. Happy accidents, right? Um, you can see how having a system like this really gives you control and helps you like really shape something. You know what I mean? Like adding in little details to keep increasing the dynamic flow of a shot. Um, I think this is looking really, really pretty cool. Um, as we come through, it'd be good to do things like, you know, if we take our asteroid and hit Shift D, grab him on the X and on the Z, bring him real close to camera. Scale this one down a bit. I'm just going to rotate him off so it doesn't look exactly the same as the other one. You can see you get these nice moments where you can have stuff like fly by. And then if we really wanted to be cool about it, we could animate his rotation. So when we come into the frame right here, we could animate his rotation and come forward and like just rotate him like that. See, it creates this sense of like, oh, this is a really chaotic scene. There's a lot of a lot of crazy things in here. So I'm gonna select the spider by control and then select uh, hierarchy. And then what I can do is I can shift D to duplicate, which creates a whole nother spider bot system for me. And with this guy selected, what I can do is I can um, uh, box select all of his keyframes and hit delete keyframes and then grab his target and delete keyframes again and then come to the constraint tab. And what I can do is we can create a new constraint for this guy. So let's uh, we'll delete the spider path for this dude and I'll just zero him out again. All right, so uh, let's grab this uh, curve and um, I'm just gonna shift D to duplicate and I'll grab it over and I'm gonna come to my camera view and I wanna think about where I want this guy to come in from. So this shot's looking nice as we fly here so right about here, I think it'd be nice if we have another guy kind of come in from right here and then another one come up from up there. So I'll grab this and I can use the, just use the same curve. What I'll do is I'll take my other spider bot, go to the constraints tab and select the spider path.001. And I will find a spot, you know, where it kind of makes sense. So maybe right about here. And then I can move this around like so. And then what we can do is we can take him and I can just go ahead and set, uh, we'll figure out where I want him to come in. So maybe right about here. So I'll move him off like this, set a keyframe, and then we'll come forward. And I want him kind of like flying side by side at this point right here. So we may have to move our curve to make that work because he might be flying too fast. Uh, to really do that. And I'll set a curve keyframe here. And then we'll come to the end and we'll move him forward even further. Maybe right about to here. And I'll set all these to linear. Yeah, it looks like he's going way too fast. So I need to drag this out to get the right speed. 
Yeah, that looks nice. I might bring him off just a little bit so he's not right on top of that guy in the shot. All right, now let's bring in another one. So we'll come here. I'm going to shift D to duplicate this curve. I'll bring it over here. Move this off. Rotate around, I think. Actually, this is probably a bad idea because he's going to be like all over the place. But let's see. We'll find out. I'll jump out of the camera and I'll grab the other, the end here. I'll go back into the camera. And now I can grab this end around to kind of line it up to wherever it is I want it to go. So maybe up here. Now I'll select this spider bot. I'll right click, select hierarchy. And then I'm going to shift D to duplicate. So we introduce one and then let's introduce the other. So he's going to come in from up here. Um, so he flies in. Now he's going way too fast, but that's all right. We can just um, play with these, dragging these keyframes out. And that's kind of nice. He gets introduced at that point. Maybe bring that in a little bit more. I'm looking for that moment where he's kind of off camera right here. I'm just trying to get him so he stays out of the shot and then we don't see him until here, which I think is kind of cool. All right, now we can just animate just a few rotations on these guys to make them interesting. Now we've got a really nice menacing reveal for our spider bots. I'm just gonna pick a couple of frames here and see what he looks like. Now we're kind of losing him here in the dark. So what we can do here is we can just realign our nebula so I'll go to my shader editor, go to world. Now we can uh, take the rotation and we can just rotate our nebula just to backlight him a bit. You can see how that really helps him stand out. It also helps make the edge of that asteroid really stand out. All right, now we can take a look at, I just want to double check a render of this to see what it looks like with all the motion blur turned on. So I'm going to just pick a few moments here, like here, and just go render image. See, because he's staying in the center of our frame, he's the focal point, he's not going to be too motion blurred, but everything else is. Um, and I come forward maybe to here. Let's test this frame. Yeah, this is looking really nice. It's looking really good. So with all these tricks kind of combined, you can see what you do is you basically start off with a really simple motion path and you use that same motion path to drive your camera, to drive your spaceships. You get one kind of general cool motion and then you start inserting a few bits like that extra asteroid that we put in, you know, just to kind of give a sense of motion. Um, you know, you get the speed just right with those settings. And then you start adding things like little rotations on the robot or a little extra drift on the camera. I hope you guys had a really fun time and I hope you learned a lot. Uh, enjoyed the next step in this process and the next shot as we talk about, you know, how to continue to refine things and continue to, you know, create camera moves that are really interesting, give us a lot of control. Thanks so much for watching. I really hope you enjoyed it. Please don't forget to hit that like button. If you liked this video, if you enjoyed it, you want to see more like it, please smash that like button so I can find out about it. Um, I hope that all this stuff really goes to helping you continue to grow and become an even more amazing Blender artist. Thanks again for watching. I really appreciate it. I will catch you in the next video. See you later. Bye.